Okay, so I'm just going to begin from scratch with this basic house tutorial and make sure when you have time that you do read through the first two pages and keep referring back to this page in particular which has some shortcuts which you should be trying to learn as you go along. These are all the standard shortcuts you use in Revit. Well, not all of them, a lot of the shortcuts. There'll be a lot more that you learn later, but this is a good starting point. You won't need to use the shortcuts for the very first um, few steps because you won't know the commands at first. Mm -hmm. So learn the commands and then go back and look at the shortcuts. And so you can see here, we've got this page on reference planes, which is the third page. And the way these instructions... Yeah? How do we save our work? Uh, into the folder on the V drive, it should what be. It CAD 2, 2 p cube CAD 2, should be. Okay, so you can see here, this page is on reference planes, which is a common tool in Revit, and we need to look for that on the home tab. Before I can do that, I need a new file back in Revit, so I'm going to switch over to Revit now and make a new file using the method that you should probably use every time by clicking on the architectural desktop. So architectural template, which you can see here on the welcome screen under projects. You can just select architectural template there and that'll begin a new file using the correct settings. And then just quickly looking back at the instructions there, you can see that on the architecture or the home tab, so this here is our architecture tab, then in the work plane panel, you have the reference plane tool and it's highlighted over here, but I know it's easier to miss because it's all the way over on the right. So back into AutoCAD, you can see there, the button is all the way over on the right here. Yours might be bigger or smaller. Sometimes the desktop will change. Um, and uh, you just need to look for that work plane panel, if you can see it's labelled down the bottom there and then you'll find the reference plane tool. That shouldn't be too hard, finding the button, but then what you probably need to have a look at is the way that you draw reference planes. So I've clicked on the reference plane button, now I'm going to click a point and you probably should just take note of roughly where I start this. I'm going to take it up and you can see then that it's giving me the angle but not the length. And that's normal. So we're not trying to draw a line here. This is a plane and the length isn't really important. As long as it's roughly the right length, the main thing is that it's the right angle. So it's 90 degrees and that's the angle I want. So I'm going to click a point. Now I'm going to come over to the right and notice how if I'm in line with the end at the top or the end at the bottom, then I'll get a dimension. Okay, so I'm going to click a point either in line with the top or the bottom. If I then come down, you can see it's going to give me a dashed line that shows me when I'm in line with the bottom. And again, you can see the angle there is 90 degrees. So now, because those are parallel, the same angle, now I can click on that number that comes up in between and change that dimension to something else. So I can make it 7,000. That's what it needs to be. So that's the first pair of reference planes. And now I need to draw another two that cross over those. So notice how here we've got the four elevation symbols. If I zoom out a bit, you'll see those. Here are the four symbols on my screen. I've drawn the two reference planes for the vertical measurements. And then I can draw a plane that goes straight across. So remember zero degrees or horizontal and another one above that's just parallel, in other words, also horizontal. And now I can make that 12,000. And so maybe you can see just from what I've done that you are trying to set a dimension or a distance between those planes, the exact length of the reference plane isn't that important. It's the distance between them that's critical and also the angle. And a good way to think of them is like construction lines. When you're drafting on a drawing board, you'll often just draw quick lines to set a set of measurements. And you don't often measure the exact length of those. 
you set the spacing, which is more important. Now, I just want to show you quickly how you can modify these. This isn't in the notes. It's something you can just work out as you go. So I've shown you that you can set a dimension by clicking on the numbers that come up. But now, I might want to change the distance between the first pair. So how do you think you could cancel a command that you're using in Revit? Remembering it's made by the same company that makes AutoCAD. Exactly, escape, just like AutoCAD. A lot of things are very similar to AutoCAD. So by pressing escape twice, it will cancel anything. And that will take you back to your select mode. So I, that means I can now select anything. I can select the reference plane, the section line, any of those things I can see on the screen. And when I select it, I'll get the dimension back. And I can change that to something else. So you can see how much easier that is than AutoCAD where you often need to use the move command or some other command to adjust your objects. With Revit it's a little bit more intuitive and you will get these measurements coming up all the time. What do you think these, these things at the end of the reference planes might be? Remembering it's similar to AutoCAD? Exactly, they're grips just like AutoCAD. So if you, if you find that your reference planes aren't long enough or they're too long, you can easily drag the ends just like you can in AutoCAD. Notice I can't change the angle. I'm trying to drag up and down there and it won't let me change the angle because I've basically fixed that by drawing it at the angle and that's really what you're trying to establish with the reference plane. You're setting an angle and in this case establishing those horizontal and vertical measurements. So the final thing I'll tell you there is that reference plane, not a line. So you're trying to you probably use the wrong tool. So the reference plane tool over at the very end on the top right. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, if you're getting that, I'll come and have a look at it. There's an issue there. So, yeah, some computers may have a uh, licensing issue still, like we had last week. Mo they should mostly be fixed, but I know a couple still do. So, just before I finish, I'm going to just get this position correctly. You can see there that it's close to the centre, or where do you think the centre might be? So I'm zooming in and out there to show you everything. Looking at those things there that we can see that keep getting bigger and smaller. How do you think we can maybe tell where the centre is? Maybe looking at the arrows. So what are these arrows here? Zooming in. Does that symbol look familiar? Pretty similar actually. This is a, it's an elevation reference but similar to a section line. We've got a section going through the middle which is a similar symbol but the elevations don't have the line. Okay and so those four elevations all point towards the centre. So the centre is roughly here and I want my building to be roughly in the centre. So I want to pick up all of these reference planes and move them over and I don't want to get anything else. So, do you remember in AutoCAD how to select things using a window? Yeah, click and drag. Now, in, in AutoCAD is a little bit different, but basically, same idea. You can click and drag, and notice how if I click and drag going left to right, it will select just the reference plane. If I go right to left, notice how it's a dashed line that I'm getting? And that's going to get the section as well because it selects the things that are inside the window and also anything they're touching. And that's just like AutoCAD. Left to right and right to left do different things. So if I select left to right, you can see I've got a solid line that I'm dragging. That'll only select the reference planes. It'll leave everything else. And then this is something you can't do in AutoCAD. You can press the arrow keys and nudge that by eye so that it's centred roughly between the elevations. So I'll give you a minute to do that and then we can have a look at the next thing.